Good morning, Ray. Uh, how have you been? I hope you are having a wonderful day and that you are ready to begin working on IEP goals three and four. So for IEP goal number three, Ray, we are going to be solving one to two step problems using data from a stem and leaf plots. So a stem and leaf plot is a way to show frequency of a set of data. A stem and leaf plot is different from other graphs because the data is organized by place value. So here we have our data set of numbers and we use the stem and leaf plot to organize these numbers right here. In our stem side, we have our tenths place. And, our, and, and, and in our leaf side, we have our ones place. So for example, for like number four, number seven, number eight, and number eight, we don't have a tenths place. We don't have a number before that. So that is why there's a zero here. And then our ones place would be four, and then seven, then eight, and eight. For our 14 and our uh, 15, we have, they both start with one, so our one would be our tenth place, so it's right here. And then in our ones place, we have the four and the five, but it's the same thing as saying 14, 15. A stem and leaf plot can show you the total number of data points collected as well as the frequency of each data point. It is another way to organize data. So the whole point of this stem and leaf plot is to organize data. So for today's worksheet, we are going to be working on read and interpret stem and leaf plots. So if you have this worksheet, please get it out. So this is our worksheet, Ray, and in the top it says, read the given stem and leaf plots and answer the questions. So I will be doing one question with you and you will be doing the rest on your own. So let's begin with question number one. The average temperatures in Fahrenheit of Lake Michigan recorded from January to December is given below. So this, what we have right here, are the average temperatures of Lake Michigan from the months of January all the way to December. And here on the side is giving us our key. It's telling us that if we have a three in one side and then the seven in the other, it's considered 37. And we're talking about temperatures here and in specific Fahrenheit. So our answers are always going to be based on, um, on, the, on the temperature and in Fahrenheit. So it would be 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And for letter A, it asks, what is the maximum temperature recorded in Lake Michigan? So the maximum is the most is the biggest. So they want to know what is the maximum num temperature recorded in Lake Michigan. So we could look at our numbers and see which one is our biggest, our maximum. Or we can also uh, write our data in a line. So we can have our set of data so whatever is easier for you, I'm going to do uh, an example of how you can also uh, organize your data. So remember in the anchor chart, they gave us our data set and then we also had our stem leaf. Here they only gave us our stem leaf so we can also put our set data. So let's put um, data set. And this is just another way of organizing if 
if you need um, if you need to you don't have to but it's only if you need to so we would put it 3 and 7 is 37 and then another 37 and then 39 and 39 and then we have 41 43 48 54 57 66 another 66 and lastly 70. So either way works. Here you have it in order and um, in a line and over here you have it in the plot. But it means the same thing. The numbers are the same and they are organized. So as it, as it was asking, what is the maximum temperature? So which one is our maximum here? Reynaldo. Yes, good job. It is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is what we're going to write here. 70 degrees. I don't have the sign for degrees, so I'm just going to put an apostrophe. But it's like I was doing the, the degree sign and then Fahrenheit. Now you are going to answer the rest of the questions on your own. Um, it's the same thing we are doing. Just uh, you can either use the stem and leaf plot. We also put it in data set. If this helped you out, you can continue doing this. If not, and you're okay with the, just the stem and leaf plot, that is uh, good too. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. If not, we are going to continue working on goals number four. So for goal number four, Ray, we are going to be solving addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division um, using all types of bills and coins as well. So dollar bills, five dollar bills, um, ten dollar bills, twenty, fifty, a hundred dollar bills. Where also we can be using quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies, um, any type of bill for this goal. And here we have our uh, coins and the values of them. So here is our penny and it's worth one cent. And our nickels are worth five cents. And our dimes, ten. Our quarters are twenty-five. And here in the bottom we have our coin, our dollar coin. That is worth one dollar. Um, these aren't very popular nowadays we usually use dollar bills however in rare occasions they give us dollar quarters um i have seen them so that's why i know they're still around however it's very uh rare uh when somebody pays with a dollar quarter there's not many um left so if you ever do get a, a quarter like this um it is a dollar um it's not a quarter so now we are going to be working on this worksheet it is called determining change one cost multiple items so please take this uh, worksheet out also, do not forget your calculator. We will be using it for this uh, worksheet. So here for this worksheet, Ray, we are going to solve each problem. So here on the top, we have a word bank. And these are our answers.
answers to the 10 questions that we will be answering. Um, they're here to help you out. So if you have a different, if you get a different answer from the ones we have up here, then uh, we need to figure out what mistake we made because these are the answers we will be using. So for question number one, Ray, it says, Carol bought two chargers at the phone store. If each charger costs $5.20 and she paid with a $20 bill, how much change should she get back? So we're talking about change here. They want to know how much change she will be getting back. So we will be using our calculator. But first, let's write down what we know. So we know each charger cost $5.20. So one, I'm going to put one C for one charger. It equals to $5.20. However, Carol bought not one charger, but two. So that means that we have to multiply two times 520 because that's what each one costs. 520 equals. So this is what we need to figure out first in order to uh, figure out how much change she should receive or she got back. So first we are going to multiply to see how much both of the chargers cost. So let's take out our calculator and we are going to multiply two times $5.20. And our answer is ten dollars and forty cents so that's how much the two chargers cost however then she said she paid with a twenty dollar bill so she paid with twenty dollars and they want to know how much is her change so from these twenty dollars are we going to add or are we going to subtract what she wasted? Good job. We are going to subtract because she does not have this anymore. She wasted it. It's not going to let me highlight. But this is what we're going to do. The $20, we're going to subtract what she wasted. And how much did she waste? Ten dollars and forty cents in order to figure out how much change she got back. So now let's take our calculator again and we are going to subtract. We're going to twenty dollars minus the ten dollars and forty cents she wasted on chargers and she should stay with or have gotten back nine dollars and sixty cents so we're gonna put oh sorry um oh i made an error here i'm so sorry uh so it was 20 minus 10 40 oh no 10 40 and that's what we got nine dollars and 60 cents. So here we're going to put $9.60. And now we would see our bank, our answer choices up here to see if we have this answer choice. And look, we do. So for question number one, it was $9.60. And and we could highlight this one or scratch it off. That way we know we don't have to use this. And that is what you will be doing for the rest of the questions, Ray. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. 
If not, you are 